Danke. Good morning. Does anybody not hear me? Okay, how about now? Does anybody remember me? Thank you. Uh, that's, that's me right there. I had a, uh, I had a rough year this year. Um, first of all, I had um, an, a tooth extracted. Then I had a uh, canal removed. Then I had a prostate resection. And then my son tells me that he's going to get married. So I have to get back tomorrow to be in time for his wedding. <laughs> and then this. I, um, I did this yes, uh, last year, and uh, people kind of enjoyed it. So hopefully, you'll enjoy this one also. I added a few little details to it. I hope you can hear me. And, uh, and I will try out my little pointer and see if this, if this will actually reach. If not, yes, it does. OK, I just went through the uh, personal little tidbits. Uh, and this will work. This is where I was born. <laughs> but I think all of you were born there somewhere, too, uh, hopefully. And this is part of the Milky Way, which is our galaxy. And right next to it is the Andromeda, which is a few uh, thousand uh, light years away. But it belongs to the same group. It's called the local group. And it consists of about uh, 17 uh, galaxies. But that's just the local group. You can tell that I do a little astronomy on the side. And, and we have millions of these uh, in, uh, as far as we can see. But let's get back to Earth where we're, we're from, right up there in there somewhere. This, this is where Germany and Poland come together. And I was born in Germany, which was then Germany, but it is now. Uh, Right here, it is now in Poland. So I can claim both a Polish and, and German heritage. This is the town where I was born. That's how it was before the war. That's our uh, villa in Germany, and that's what's left over. And um, it still kind of looks that way, because money is still kind of tight. But it is, it is coming up. And that's yours truly when I was about five. And they tell me that at that time, I was already uh, making uh, little pottery things out of clay that I could find myself. And they tell me that my ancestors way, way back we're already uh, working and, and uh, experimenting in, in ceramics. I think they might be right, but not 100%. That's him. <laughs> and I think you can see the resemblance. But no glasses. And he was working on things like this. And we can find these things. Maybe this, I'm not sure. And maybe this, I'm not at all sure. But does this remind you of anything? 
I'm thinking the ham spare. <laughs> okay. Now uh, I'll show you some of the early efforts that I was uh, under my uncle's uh, direction. He uh, took me in when I was about 11 years old and he said, okay, your older brother is going to go into medicine. So what's left over for you is to uh, go with the tradition of the family. So he started working with me. And that's him. He was, he was a master, a tech, a master ceramist at Meissen and Rosenthal also. This is my first effort, all in clay, hand turned uh, when I was about 11. And I still have this. That's another close up view of it. I hope that picture comes out back there. Do we need less light or more light or uh, what do you think? Is the light okay? I, I saw some signs turn it down. Is that possible? Okay, next effort. A little bit more sophisticated but uh, with uh, more glazes and things like that, but still rather modest. This one is a little better. A lot of work in this one. Is that better? As you can see, a detailed scene and everything, but for an 11-year-old, uh, that, that tests your, your patience. <laughs> Then, after the war, we moved to uh, southern Germany. My, my mother managed to get away from the Russian uh, onslaught, and she pushed for West Germany, which uh, I have to give her a lot of credit. Five children, and no, no transportation, no anything. And she managed to end up in West Germany which was a great, great feat. Otherwise, we would have ended up in the, in the, uh, in the Eastern Bloc. And this is where I started uh, ceramics. This is an old fort. It's about uh, 900 years old. And down in those rooms somewhere, they, they managed to uh, work with clay and process it so that, so that castings and things could be done. This was started right after the war. Yep, this is how we got into this place. And right in there, this is how I learned uh, my freehand turning, uh, my, the, the initial training that everyone goes through. And um, this is what it really looks like still. Now the training on um, painting, on painting patterns, patterns that have to be repeated over and over again. Some of you, uh, I'm not sure, did anybody work in the Red Wing uh, factory before 67? I don't see any, I see one hand. Congratulations, you are there. And these patterns had to be, uh, you, had to, you had to be able to reproduce that. That's pretty much one of the first things that you teach an apprentice. Some really interesting patterns and uh, people collect the, these, these ceramics also just like the uh, Red Wing and they're quite expensive. I, uh, I'm uh, happy to say that I do own a few of them, but not too many. There's another pattern that, uh, that was very popular, and you have to produce that in a few minutes. Same here. The pattern had to look right. There's always somebody over your shoulder looking 
looking at the different pieces when you turn them out. Another pattern. But I really didn't want to do painting. I wanted to make models. I wanted to design things. And, uh, you know, I was sort of, I had, uh, I had a kind of a chip on my shoulder because I really wanted to go to school just like my brother. But there was no money and, you know, they said, you stay put. So I started making models and I, it turns out that uh, some of my, uh, some of my uh, ideas went into um, national contests and they won some pretty, uh, pretty good contracts uh, for the company which was really necessary to survive. This is a model that I have to work on. This is a pretty uh, intricate pattern that had to be uh, had to be done, but I was in I was making models. I was uh, I was not doing this kind of painting anymore. Model work. This is a very a very large piece. The 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 molds had to really work, and uh, this was this was tough work. This was a very similar one, and then these patterns were getting more sophisticated. At that at that time, they were able to hire people who were who could design some of these patterns. And this was a freehand piece, a very heavy piece. Had to be uh, I had to be able to do that. And this one also. And now, all of a sudden, my mother decided, this is it. We are leaving the country. I promised my husband, uh, my father um, was kind of a war victim. He, um, he did sort of what the Schindler uh, movement did only at a small, very small scale. But he ended up in, in prison camps and things like that for his efforts. He used to give uh, his passport to colleagues. He was um, a set designer and a playwright in uh, theater work. And many of his colleagues were Jewish. And I think we can uh, safely say he got at least uh, about 10 people out of the country but he paid for it. But my mother said, okay, no more. Uh, we will not be part of any, anything uh, that has to do with guns, wars, or anything else. I'm leaving the country. Little did, he, did she know. <laughs> you don't know where you end up when you just uh, say, okay, I'm leaving the country. Everything is up in the air, but the hopes are there. And we arrived in New York. What a sight it is when you come in and you see this. New York and then uh, it, uh, we didn't know, my, my brothers and I didn't know where we're going and then um, it was revealed to us, we're not staying in New York, we're, we're going to Minnesota. Because my brother had already uh, uh, been uh, accepted at uh, Carleton College, no, uh, St. Olaf's College in uh, Northfield uh, for pre-med, and then he had high hopes to go to medical school in St. Paul. And this is where we live, but this was not the house that was there in Minnesota, in, in Northfield. Th there were huts that were made out of tin, and I think they were used for returning military, or somebody told us even uh, German prisoners of war. So you have to imagine right there and next to it, 
there were about four or five of these uh, metal huts, but they did have showers. And then this was a great improvement. I don't know if you, any of you know Northfield, but way in the back of this building was a funeral home. And we lived in one room right next to the funeral home, which was kind of entertaining. <laughs> but now they have furniture in the store, but that staircase is, that's how we got to our apartment. And I don't know if anybody remembers this. This was uh, Jesse James. When, and I think it was this little uh, bank right there. Well, unaccustomed as I was for having anything that I wanted to do, all of a sudden I was told there is a job in Red Wing. And I said, OK, well, here we go. And this is how I remember Red Wing. That was pretty much the first uh, impression. It's still in my mind. That that's what it looked like. And I thought, boy, not too picturesque. But Mr. Richardson, who was, uh, I think he just started being president there, wrote me this note. And, and he said, if you want to come by, and if you know what you want to do, we may be able to work something out. So I did. And the first thing we did was we climbed up on that little hill there right next to town. I don't know the name of it, but I'm sure you're all familiar with that. And I think I ended up living at the Y for a while. And then I moved to another uh, rooming house, which I can't remember. I think it's on Main Street somewhere. I think I saw that. I think it still says rooms and apartments for rent or something like that. And here's our, my new friends, Alice and Ted. and. They kind of took over and they said, don't worry, we'll work it out. What a nice guy he was and what a nice lady she was. And they kind of showed me the area and he said, what do you like? And he said, well, I like animals. I wanted to go to Canada. I didn't want to come here. And he said, well, let's go to the zoo then. And so we did, and my, my younger brother tagged along. And this is, the, they had a, I think it was a Buick special. And I, I asked Ted, uh, is this what they call a big shot car? <laughs> and he said, well, a little big shot car is what it is. Everybody recognizes that, I'm sure. And before I uh, forget about this, uh, there's a little story that I tell some people. And um, it's, it's sort of um, when we started, when uh, Ted started, uh, you know, why don't you come and and uh, have dinner with us maybe once a week or something like that. That'll get you a chance to learn some English and uh, uh, get used to uh, life in, in uh, you know, after all, we've only been here in the United St States uh, for a few months at that time. And he introduced me to his little son who was about seven years old and he said, uh, David, this is my friend. His name is Johannes. And uh, he comes from Germany. And I noticed that David, who was about seven, is David here today? No. And he was really awestruck. And 
and he kept looking at me and he kept uh, moving out of the way whenever I got up or something. And then finally when dinner was over and it was time to leave, he ran to the door, to the front door. He opened it up and he made a bow like this and he said, well, good night, your highness. <laughs> The way they pronounced your highness, your highness, that's... <laughs> and this is what I looked like. I, I guess I did look like a royalty or something. <laughs> Not hardly. I, I think the, the car speaks for itself. And we used to watch the Mickey Mouse Club and the Honeymooners. I like the Mickey Mouse Club. But I didn't really understand the Honeymooners, all the stuff that went on, the, you know, the power zoom and, and uh, all those antics, but I guess, uh, I guess it was just uh, make-believe. Later on, when I was, uh, went to the police academy, I found out that the Honeymooners was used as training videos for uh, violent behavior. The, the, the entire cycle, uh, Ralph used to go through the entire cycle from threatening, pow, zoom, to the moon, and then when it was over, he would promise Alice anything. You know? And that's the time when an abused person gets what he wants, what she wants. That's what we learned at the academy. Anyway, the mouse, the Mickey Mouse Club was really something that I liked. And right then and then, uh, then and there, I decided if I ever get a chance, I'd like to work for Disney, which almost happened, but I'll tell you later. This got my interest. <laughs> But she's not doing too well now, I think. But back to business, as you can see, I kind of uh, try to tell you, if you, uh, if you have to design it, you have to make a model. For some of you who are not too familiar with, with pottery, you have to make a master mold. Then you have to make molds from the master mold then you have to cast it, and then you have to finish it, apply paints, and then you can sell it, and then someone can collect it. <laughs> These were my two uh, very generous uh, co-workers, uh, Ted Hutchison and Charles Murphy. Charles Murphy did not come to the to the shop too often, but he did now and then. He was a very, very nice gentleman. And I told you before, uh, there's no one like Ted Hutchison. I think these photographs are well known. I, th I kind of borrowed them. And do you remember this stair? I think it's in the museum. This is how you got up to the shop every morning. Okay, there are two choices. Either, either you uh, make a mold and make the casting, or you freehand um, form it either way. But, uh, of course, uh, with production these days, well, there are many things that are made by hand, and uh, they are really uh, special things. Okay, just, uh, just to go through this quickly, you make a mold, and this is the detail of the mold. You can see how the piece, what the shape of the piece is when you put it together. Then you pour liquid um, clay into it, 
and allow it to absorb some water until the thickness is just right, then you pour the rest of it back out. And this is another mod mold and same idea. This one has a handle, so it's kind of a little bit tougher to handle, but not that much of a problem. A little more complex situation, it has more than two or three pieces because it has a top to it and the locks have to work properly. This is some of the things that I had to do. Uh, many, many models didn't quite work that well and we re ended up reworking master model, master molds to make it, to make it work a little more efficiently and, uh, and uh, keys to it and so forth. Or you hand, you hand uh, mold this piece, you, you turn it, you freehand throw it. And this is how you, you know, I just used a little guy. He was, turn, he was learning how, this is how I learned, but in my day, you pushed it with your foot, there was a large flywheel underneath, which was which was turned by foot. So th there was no electric power. I don't know if I can turn this on, but uh, it actually uh, moves. But I'm not sure that this clicker will work. No, I don't think it does. Okay, so now I found some of the designs while I was at Red Wing. And some pieces I found uh, last year that were actually produced, and some I haven't found yet. I'm not sure if they were ever produced, but at that time, um, you know, the, the lines were, uh, there were lots of things that were being produced, so I'm, uh, I'm not too sure that some of my pieces ever got to production. This one, everybody, I think, recognizes. I did all the detail work on this one. This was coming up for the centennial, and uh, the little joke about this was um, the the uh, reverse side. The uh, the front was pretty much recognizable, and it was well set. The, it just had to be uh, modeled out. But the back, if you look closely, and some of you have, I'm sure. Look at the size of Minnesota. You know, that was my little joke. <laughs> but to my surprise, it, this became pretty popular, I guess, in many different versions. They even uh, erased the top and they made other designs, but uh, the reverse stayed the same, as you can see here. So I guess the, uh, you know, that was kind of a, a worthwhile thing to do. And uh, there were different um, uh, different applications. This one is very interesting, I thought. I never saw that application, but it, it didn't have the deep relief. Here's another piece that I designed that uh, I was not sure that it ever uh, hit the production line. That was the only model that I had, and as you can see, it had no. It had no. Um, it was not identified. This was a kind of a test piece. But last year, I found this, and it shows you that it was. I saw it in catalogs also in in black, and other different applications. So I guess it did. It did come into production. There it has the ID on it. And here's another piece. This was uh, a, a uh, cake platter. Very difficult to make because it was very thin. The, the molding was difficult. And there was some doubt would it ever hit the production. 
And this, was, this is my own piece that I had. It was not identified, but this was the original application. That's the way it's uh, made in two pieces. And there it is. It was, it did go into production with different uh, versions of applications. I saw all kinds of patterns lately of it, so I, I guess it did sell. Even this application I, I saw somewhere, so um, it, it was around, I guess. Now, uh, this talks about uh, some of the work that I did on a daily basis. I worked on some pieces quite a bit to, to improve the, uh, the production on some, some pieces, just a very small detail. This one, small details, but uh, it, it's a very recognizable piece. It had to be uh, refined for, uh, for model, for, uh, for the uh, mold and so forth. This one, fairly well known, but some of the detail had to be worked out to be able to cast it. Here, uh, the detail was in the handle. The handles did not come out easily out of the molds, so they had to be slightly adjusted to make work easier. And this one, a large piece, very important that a two-piece mold will work. And the handle, again, was the problem. And we did manage to, to uh, make it work uh, a lot easier. Is a detail of it. And so it has to draw from both sides. Somebody told me this little saying, if it's red wing, the tops don't fit. So, so that was one of my jobs, to, to rework the tops a little bit so that they come closer to actually fitting well. And um, that is, is mostly uh, work in, in the master model. Modify, keep the master models, but modify it a little bit. The same thing here in various sizes. And as you can see, it did fit pretty well. Even this top didn't quite work that well. And it, those are things that can be worked out if you take the time to do it. This piece too, the, uh, you know, the handle has to stay in position. It, it, can't, it can't sag or it can't move. So the, these pieces are, uh, you know, they've been around, but uh, some, of the, some of the mechanics needed, uh, needed uh, some work on them. This one also. And even here, the uh, you know, the, the, the main piece had to, had to be slightly worked on. That freed uh, Ted to do some original model work, which I, he was a little bit, you know, he, uh, okay, uh, pretty soon you can get at it, but I, I'll be looking at you. <laughs> a very intricate piece, beautiful, beautiful design. These are Murphy pieces. They needed some slight adjusting, but they had to be had to remain just exactly recognizable as they were. Even even these uh, pieces uh, needed a little rework, and this is what an apprentice does. Even this rather well-known piece, in many many variations. Uh, at the very tip is where the break-off comes, 
and that it has to it has to come off very clean with one move so that the, the entire shape the entire shape stays the same do you recognize this do you remember what my ancestor did <laughs> well in this piece and i talked to uh, some of the hams people and they were interested in uh, they did not know who actually designed this bear and i don't know who actually designed the bear but my assignment was to work on that aloof uh, impression, uh, expression of the bear. That, that's what they wanted. They wanted this uh, aloofness in it and the way the ears perked up and so forth. And little details on the hands. And then the, uh, you know, the, the writing itself, there are several versions. One of them is, is, is a relief version and another one is where the, uh, the whole picture is just applied over under the glaze. And this is the, the detail. It had to be very subtle and very slight, but uh, it had to be there. Even here, problems with assembling. And this is what I learned in Germany. You know, there, as you probably know, the Germans tend to be very, very precise in what they do. And this is what, kind of what I learned over there, how to make things work. Murphy designs, some of them had problems with the, with the top, how, how the shapes came out. Some uh, work a very slight amount of work and then remake the mold, the master mold, and some a little bit more. This is a well-known piece. So is this, the crown is different, difficult, but uh, you know, there are details that can be improved on. This one is a beautiful piece. So is this, Mr. Murphy had a real artistic ability. And then all of a sudden, my mom, again, she decided, well, we're not staying here. We are going to California. And I wanted to stay or come back later, but things don't always uh, work out the way you think they will. But uh, this was my official end of Red Wing. A little recommendation, Mr. Glanzer said, any time you want to come back, you can come back to us, and uh, Ted wants you back also. And then I started looking around for work in, uh, in other areas, uh, first in Chicago, and then, then in, eventually in California. But at that time, uh, not too many people wanted to hire an 18-year-old uh, designer. This is uh, Ted's little letter to me. He was looking for me, but he, he was not too successful to find anything in Illinois either. And then my little sister, oops. My little sister finally joined us, the way on the left, and the, uh, my three brothers. My oldest sister stayed in Germany. Okay, California, via Chicago. In Chicago, we tried for a while, and we had some friends there, but things did not work out too well, so on to California. And this is, this is uh, Southern California. Up, up there is Simi Valley, close, close to uh, Ventura County. This is where we live now. And 
this is what Simi Valley looks like, a little bit better than uh, Red Wing. I'm, I'm surprised how small uh, Red Wing stayed. But when we moved into Simi Valley, it had about 40,000 residents, and now it has 180,000, I think. This is my house in Simi Valley. This is what, you look, what it looks like when you look at the water. Now last year, we went to Germany and I decided I'm going to pay a little attention to some of the potteries that I can see. And I just recorded some of the uh, things that I saw. This, this is how history, uh, how pottery uh, pretty much started in history. Uh, even in 1200, they, start, they made patterns and, and shapes which are very, very similar to the early uh, red wing shapes. And this is uh, some of the uh, stylized language that they used, uh, what, what the, uh, what the di di there are very strong dialects in Germany. And if you don't know what they're talking about, you will never know what they're talking about. But they still, this is about a th eight, nine hundred years old, some of these terms, and they still use them. Here's an old kiln. I think it's still workable. It's a large walk-in. They fill it up and close the door and hope for the best. These are some of the uh, collector's items which are uh, all handmade and some of them are over a thousand years old. Uh, most of them about four or five hundred years old and they're very expensive and very collectible. As you can see by the collectors, they're just as old. <laughs> very rare pieces. This is being produced right now. You can see uh, some, some of these uh, traditional pieces are, have been around for a long time and some of these small uh, potters, there's a, um, there's a whole town that is full of small potteries that all produce their own individual and very unique uh, items. These are pretty much all of them hand thrown with a few exceptions. This is uh, green work right there. This is, this is uh, about five feet tall, and there's a day, almost a day's work in some of these. And they are uh, ready to be processed. And these, some of the old glazes, they're still using them for, uh, just like in the old days. Very interesting shapes, mostly handmade. Some, some of the potters would, wouldn't uh, look at a, at a mold if they could help it. Some of the uh, variety of shapes that one potter produces and he, uh, he still does that, uh, that some of the family, his family for generations and stuff. some very expensive pieces which are collectible and uh, collecting goes on there very uh, actively. Very complicated piece and very uh, expensive. I don't think anybody sold that yet, uh, bought it yet. Another potter from the area. and traditional pieces that are being made. Very high quality pieces. 
again, very high quality. And this one was up for auction. Make a bid on these. Make an offer. And uh, these are pretty simple pieces, but uh, very traditional. And then Rosenthal, very, very high quality. I think uh, Ms. Cecil worked for them for some of the designs also, so I hear. I'm not sure, uh, so the story goes, but I'm not sure uh, uh, how much of that story is correct. Some very complicated uh, mold making for these pieces. Very high quality pieces. And this is dinnerware being produced by Rosenthal. It occurred to me that I might be the only living designer modeler that actually worked at uh, Red Wing. Is there anybody else here who did? I don't see any hands. And uh, I know that Ms. Seisel uh, designed for Red Wing uh, quite a few pieces, but I'm not sure that she actually ever worked, actually physically worked here at Red Wing. I know, I know she visited, uh, but I'm not 100% sure that she actually worked here. And uh, she recently passed away at 105. I don't know how many hundreds and hundreds of designs that she's, she's uh, responsible for. This was in one of your uh, bi-monthlies. I never met her, but uh, I'm sure she's a, she was a very, very nice person. She also designed non-ceramic pieces. And that's the end of this part. If you want to stick around, I have a little bit more that I can show you. And I just put a few credits because many of my photographs come from books and, you know, I, it's not possible to actually be able to look at all these things. So many of them come from books and the pictures of, of Mr. Murphy and, and Ted Hutchison are also well known. They are from the Ray Rice uh, books, I believe. This is what California looks like sometimes, my backyard. And this is what it looks like when you go to the water. And here are some, some things you may not be interested in either. But these are things that I made from time to time, mostly for friends and uh, family and so forth. Among things that I've done is not just ceramics. I was also a dental um, um, educator at uh, UCLA for many years and also a police detective for a long time. So I don't know how I made all that, and I'm only 39 years old. <laughs> Just like Jack Benny. <laughs> uh, those are some of the things that I do in wood. One of my favorite things is a chip carving, which I'll show you in a minute. But some of these pieces are for family and so forth. Some detail on them. This is a five-piece uh, assembly, which is, is a pyramid, and it has the cartouches of my three kids on it. This is, uh, this is uh, some of the things that people like. This is chip carving. Every little piece is, every little indentation is three cuts. It takes a long time to do these patterns. 
but every now and then somebody says, can you make something like that for me? So I sit down and it's very hard on my hands. <laughs> this is from UCLA Times. Detail. Some really detailed work. But you know, a designer has to do something, you know. My uh, to be daughter in law likes owls, so she says, Make me owls, okay. Some other work for, ch for kids. And some metal work, this is gold work. And um, this ring weighs about uh, an ounce and it has a diamond in it. This is uh, the kind of thing that you learn to do when you do dental work. Some detail, uh, I had an offer on these. These are gold miniatures. Somebody wanted to pay me $3,000 for them, but my wife said no. This is a well-known character in, in German comic books. More gold work. More, and things like that, silver. And finally, dental work. Do you need any of these? Now we do implants. We don't do bridges anymore. Well, I don't. I'm long gone from there. <laughs> ceramic, uh, this is uh, ceramic work in, in miniature. <laughs> Somebody needs that. And that is really the end of it. to answer questions if anybody uh, dares to ask a question <laughs> but